Welcome to my presentation about container live migration. My name is Adrian Reber. I work at Red Hat since 2015 and for the last 10 years I have been focusing on uh, process migration. Process migration is the basis of the container live migration I'm, I'm showing here today and I'm involved in CRIU, Checkpoint Restore and User Space since 2012 which is the basis for the process migration we are using here. And I'm mainly focusing on container migration for the last five years. The information from today's presentation can also be found in this uh, blog post I wrote uh, with all the details I'm mentioning here and in my demos. Today's agenda is um, I first want to go about um, a few use cases, why container migration um, may be interesting and how it can be used in different use cases. Then I want to go into the details, how CRIU enables, um, how CRIU enables you to migrate processes and, and containers. Then I want to give a few additional demos and then a short outlook um, where this uh, process and container migration might be heading to. I like to start with a definition of container life migration because this is not always clear to everybody I'm talking to. And for me, it's basically the same um, what happens uh, when you migrate a, a virtual machine. You transfer, um, your container from one system to another. You could also call it um, stateful migration so that the container is running, uh, cont continues to run in the same state on the destination system. And from a very high level view, container migration is just a few simple steps. You serialize your container somehow on your source system. You, in our case, we try to write it to, to disk and then we transfer the, the result from the source system of the migration to the destination system. And there we then just restore the processes in its container. And that's, that's it. You have um, container live migration. And this is all based on CRIU, Checkpoint Restore and User Space. CRIU is, is one possible way to um, do Checkpoint Restore in, in Linux. Um, today I would say it's, it's, the, it's, it's one of the best um, alternatives there if you want to do Checkpoint Restore in Linux. And especially the, the integration into container runtimes and is, is working best in combination with CRIU. There are multiple integrations of, of CRIU into container runtimes, container engines. And in my talk, I will focus on, on the integration into, into Podman and how Podman can be used to checkpoint restore containers and how Podman can be used to migrate containers from one system to another. So I mentioned I want to give a few use cases why you container migration or the technology behind the container migration might be might be useful for your use case. And one thing is um, you want to update the kernel on your system where the containers are running, but you have um, stateful containers, I don't know, maybe a database or something which has um, data loaded into memory, the, the caches are filled. So, and you do not want to, to lose the state of your, of your application in the container. And so, so Podman in combination with CRIU can be used to checkpoint a container. You can update um, your kernel and then you can reboot your system and restore the container from its uh, previous state. I have prepared also a short, um, diagram showing this here. So this is the, the, the different colors are basically the, the memory of the processes of the operating system. So you have your, your host running with its, all its memory. Um, 
used, loaded by, by different programs, by the operating system. And one part of the memory is, is the container with, it, with its state. And so what we want to do, we want to take out the state of the container from the running operating system. So we checkpoint the container onto disk. So it's now um, saved the state of the container. Then we reboot the host, so the host is gone. And then we restore the container back into the new host, which I try to visualize using green. So it's now a different uh, state because it has been rebooted with, new, with a new kernel, for example. But a container and all its state and memory is still the same as before. Um, the demo uh, would look like this. So I first want to have a look if there are any containers running now. So there are no containers running currently. So now I will start a container. I have prepared a Wildfly based container. Wildfly is an, a Java application server. And I created a really simple um, stateful application in there. It's, it's called Hello in my case. And what it does is the, the stateful application just, um, if you um, query it via HTTP, it returns an integer and incre increases it. And the next time you query the uh, uh, application, you get the next integer. So it's, it's really probably the most simple form of a stateful application. So I say curl to query the container and then I say podman inspect um, to get the IP address of the container and then I'm it's running on port 8080 and then the path to the application it's it's called hello world so let's run this this should give me back a zero and if I run it a second time it gives me a one and a two and so on if I would now re reboot the system and start a container again it would start again at zero so what I will do now, I will now um, say podman container checkpoint and let's tell podman he should work on the last container I, I started. So now um, podman will talk to runc and runc will talk to Kriu and they will write the checkpoint to disk. If I now look at the output, there's no more container running. And if I try now to connect to it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work because there's no more container running. So now I will reboot my system and wait a few seconds until the virtual machine comes back up. Um, the system is, is um, RHEL 8.2 with Podman, RunC and Creo also from, from RHEL 8.2 installed on the system. So it's all just what comes with the operating system out of the box, no additional changes necessary. So now let's look here, podman ps, no container running. If I try to connect to my container, this doesn't work, of course. So now I try to restore the container. I say podman container restore. And again, work on the last container. Um, so now it did something. So let's see if, if I connect again to the container. Um, I should get back a three because um, this was the state the container was checkpointed previously when I did the checkpoint. So yeah, now I get a three, a four, or five. So I was able to do a, um, a checkpoint. I rebooted my system and I was able to restore the container in the same state it was uh, before checkpointing without losing any state or information the container had. So this was um, one of the possibilities uh, where um, Checkpoint Restore, the technology behind container life migration um, can be helpful. The other one is um, quick startup. So I have a container running in my system and it takes some time to start up because it initializes um, memory, it has to load libraries. So what I can do, I'll take a copy of my running container and write it to disk. And now I can create multiple copies of the same container, um, which has already been initialized and which does not need any further initialization and uh, startup time. So um, going back to my, to my demo system here, 
So now I have a container, it's running. And let's see, it returns probably a, a six now. So um, now I want to make copies of this already initialized container. So now I say podman container checkpoint. And I again say work on the latest container. And then I tell um, podman to keep the container running. So it should not stop the container. It should just create a checkpoint and the container should still be running. And then I tell um, Podman additionally, it should export the checkpoint to a file, um, which can then be later used uh, to create um, a copy of that container. So now uh, Podman and Creu and RunC are writing the checkpoint of the container to, to a disk. And now I can still access my container. So seven, eight, it's still running as it was before. But now I can um, create a new or I can use my checkpointed container to um, create another instance of the same container with the same state it was previously in. So when I say podman container restore and now I say import and now I tell podman about the checkpoint archive I just created previously. And so I tell Podman to um, create a copy or use create another container using the exported checkpoint information. So now Podman says error creating container storage because now Podman tries to recreate a container with the same ID it had when I checkpointed it. The ID is of course uh, used by the original running container. If the original container would have been stopped um, this would have worked now, but now I have to tell Podman to give the container a new name. So um, I say name hello one, and let's see now it. I don't get an error. And if I now say Podman ps, I say now I have two containers running, and that they look to be running the same image and the same command from what I see here. So now, now let's try to access the, um, the container I just uh, restored. And I can say now here name hello one. And now I should get back, uh, I think a seven because I got back a six last time I did a checkpoint so okay this doesn't work uh, so how does the command look like oh i don't have to tell name i just have to give the name okay so i now access the container here and now i get a back a seven an eight a nine a ten eleven twelve and if i now um, access my uh, original container which is called inspiring beaver here I should get back a uh, 10, 11. So now I have two containers um, running, which used to have the same state at some point in time, and now they have different state states. So I can um, restore additional copy of the container. I say again, restore, and then I say import checkpoint archive. And I'll give it a new name. I call this one hello2. And now Podman restores the container. And if I now try to access hello2, I should again get a seven because that's the state the container was in when I checkpointed it. Yes, and that's that's it. And now look at Podman PS. Um, I, I can see I have three containers running, which are almost identical, but as I as they answered different queries, they are now in different states, but they used to be all the same container. So um, I, 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 I call this quick startup. And the thing is, um, this cannot be really be seen here in, in the demo because my small container starts up pretty fast. But if you look closely at the startup times of my container, so the initial startup time of the Wildfly container until it can 
answer queries is about eight seconds. And if I restore the container from the checkpoint, it's about four seconds. So I already get something like um, uh, 50% uh, increase in startup time um, because I started from an already initialized container. So the, the last use case I want to present is um, container live migration. And again, I have a container running on my source system and I'll take it out of the running system by using a checkpoint, writing it to disk. And then I can restore the checkpointed container multiple times on the destination system and have a container live migration, stateful container migration by moving the checkpoint archive to the destination system. I will show a demo of this um, later at the end of the talk. So now some details about CRIU. Um, the first step in, in this whole um, operation is, is to checkpoint a container. And checkpointing is, um, is one of the first things um, CRIU does is um, pause the process using ptrace in, in most, most of the cases. And so the, the, the process is paused, all necessary information is collected from the process and then written to disk. And the collection of um, information about the collection of, of information about the process is, is one, one of the interfaces uh, Cree uses is um, proc pit. There are a lot of files there which give details about uh, the state of the process. So um, CRIU goes over all processes in the container and collects the information from, from proc pit. And um, this is one of the things why CRIU is also called checkpoint restoring user space. And this is different than other checkpoint restore implementation which existed on, on Linux previously. So um, CRIU tried from the beginning to use existing interfaces as much as possible to get information about the running process. And CRIU also added additional interfaces to the Linux kernel, but these interfaces are not uh, only useful for, for checkpoint restore, they are also used um, in, in other use cases um, to get information for, about running processes. So um, CRIU tries to get a lot of information from, from proc pit there. And information um, about the process which is not available through proc pit. And CRIU tries to extract from the process with a concept called parasite code. Parasite code is probably my most favorite part of CRIU and it's definitely also the, the craziest um, because uh, it's just something you do not expect if you never dealt with CRIU before. So the parasite code is injected into the post process and then the process continues to run the parasite code. So the parasite code is now kind of um, a daemon running inside the process to be checkpointed and the daemon waits for commands um, from, from the main CRIU process. So the, now the main CRIU process can talk to the process it wants to checkpoint using the parasite code daemon and tell um, the destination process, I want to have all your memory pages, write them to disk, I want to have information which uh, can be retrieved from within the address space of the process. So um, all the information which cannot be accessed from the outside of the process, CRIU can now access from within the address space of the process by using the parasite code. So once um, all the information um, is extracted using the parasite code from within the address space of the process, the parasite code is removed again. CRIU calls this curing the process. The process should usually never know that it was under the control of the parasite code or CRIU. 
And at this point, um, the process can continue to run as it was before. So um, the process will be running and we'll never know it was under the control of, of the parasite code. Uh, a simple diagram to show how this works. So we have the original um, process running here in memory. Now the parasite code comes along. We take out a copy of the original code and store it outside of the process. We put the parasite code into the process, use it to extract information from within the address space of the process. And once we are done, um, the process is cured again, uh, like mentioned just before, and the original code is put back into the process and the process never knows it was under the control of the parasite code. At this point, checkpointing is, is finished. All relevant information has been written to disk and the target process is killed or um, as seen in one of my previous demos, um, it can continue to run. So um, this is just basically um, how the user decides what it wants to do. If you want to do a checkpoint and restore because of reboot, it will stop the process. If you want to do, I don't know, maybe an, an incremental checkpoint every few hours to not lose the state of your, of your container, you just do a checkpoint and let the container running or the process running. Um, so now that the checkpointing is finished, I shortly want to talk about um, container live migration and SE Linux. So when I um, initially looked into getting um, CRU support into Podman, um, it, it, it basically worked after a few months, it was, it was just working. Um, but um, the SE Linux labels were never restored correctly. They were not even, even touched. And, and one of the thing is if you run under SE Linux, um, Creo does things which SE Linux does not expect. So you have your process running in the container and then Creo comes along and injects the parasite code. And now all of a sudden something from within the container is talking to the outside of the container because Creo talks to the process uh, or to the parasite code in the process. So there are things going on which, which as, as Linux does not expect and which it does not allow. So there were additional steps necessary um, to make Creo work in combination with as, as Linux. So um, Creo already had uh, LSM support since 2015. And this was implemented with the main focus on, on AppArmor to support um, CRIU in LexD, LexC use cases to migrate processes there under, under AppArmor confinement. So, and, and it's, it's really not complicated um, to, to, to implement this or it's not it's not complicated. It's not implemented in a complicated way. So during checkpointing, um, Creo basically reads out the, the current attribute of the of the of all the processes and stores them in the checkpoint image. And during restore, all those um, attributes are restored and just written back. So this is for this is work for AppArmor and the. SE Linux um, support was basically saying if you run under some, if you run under any kind of SE Linux context which which does not start with unconfined, um, then Creo will just tell you, I have no idea how to to handle this. So um, so it it worked if you were not running under some special confinement like Podman does, but if you're using um, labels like or security context like Podman does, it was just not working. So uh, it needed a, a few changes to work in combination with Podman and the, the necessary changes were, like already mentioned, we had to label the, the socket um, using for the parasite daemon um, communication correctly, then like uh, up armor, we had to read and write the attributes of the current process. And then 
it becomes a little it became a little bit more complicated because um as the lin so so when Creu restores the process it's running under the um context of running outside of the container and then we have to change or we have to transition into a different context and this is not something uh, easily possible with um Linux and uh, with SE Linux as as it, as it was working with App Armor, so we needed additional policies to make the DIN transition um, possible here at this point, and then we um, had to make sure we change the context as late as possible so that we are running under SE Linux context outside of the container during restore as long as possible. Then we are trying to uh, influence the PID of the restore processes using process kernel last pit. And this also needed additional policies to be able to write to this file during restore. Then all sockets, um, TCP sockets, and need to have the correct label, um, as, as a Linux label to, um, to work uh, correctly. And then we had to create the log files with the appropriate labels because then as Creo is running at some point under the container context and it can no longer write to it log files. And at a few places we had file descriptor leaks into tools Creo is calling. So we also had to make sure that um, those file descriptors do not leak out because as a Linux was also not happy with those uh, file descriptors hanging around. So um, now we are uh, through with um, Checkpointing, we are through with SE Linux, and now we come to the second or the last step of the container migration process. This is restoring of the process. So, what happens here is Creo just reads all the checkpoint images it has written previously and which we use to restore the container and the processes in it. And then um, Creo does a clone for each PID, a thread ID in the in in the in the container. And the thing is, Creo always operates on process trees. So you give Creo a PID, and then it will checkpoint all processes below this ID. So basically, the process and all its child processes. And it always um, restores the processes with the same PID to not break uh, parent-child relations um, of restored processes. So um, another interesting thing about, about um, how Creo does this is, um, is, is what I call the, the PID dance. So uh, to restore a process um, with the same PID, this is what Creo used to do. It opened Proxys kernel and as last pit, it wrote the pit it wants minus one to NS last pit, then it closes NS last pit, then it quickly does a clone and then it does a get pit and verifies that it actually is the same. It does a get PID to verify that a PID is actually the PID it wanted to have. If the PID is a different one because some other process was created uh, during this time, then, then Creo will fail at this uh, point. So this this um, is can lead to race conditions because someone else can create a process during that time. And it, it requires multiple system calls, so it's, um, it's slow. And so we were looking for something else to create processes with a certain PID. <clears throat> And looking back in history, um, there was already a, a syscall implemented in 2010. This was also done for in kernel checkpoint restore, which was never merged uh, upstream. It was called eClone. So eClone had a parameter to tell the, the kernel, I want to create a process with this PID. And but this was never merged. And so we um, in 2019 we tried to do a uh, we tried again to avoid the PID dance um, with the help of clone 3 and clone 3 was was introduced um, <clears throat> because the parameters of clone were running out and, and clone 3 was introduced from the beginning um, 
to be uh, more extensible for the future so that um, you can add additional features to Clone 3. And that's also what we did uh, in, uh, in in Creu and uh, Clone 3. So we extended Clone 3 to include uh, the set TID par parameter in, in, in the kernel. And, and now we can, with one single syscall, we can create a process with a desired PID. And so we do not have to do the PID dance. It's not racy, it's not slow. So, um, and it basically looks, looks like this. So we just do a clone and tell it we want to have a certain PID, do the syscall, and then we either get a new process or we do not get it. We do not even have to verify the PID of the created process because um, the, the syscall will fail if the uh, PID we want is, is not available. So, um, so we create a lot of processes. Uh, we recreate the process tree and then Creo morphs all the recreated processes back to its state. Um, they should be for the restore process. And um, a nice way to describe this is um, um, our, our file descriptors. So when Creo does a checkpoint, it, it looks at all the resources the process is using, and it also looks at the, the file descriptor. So it looks at which, which file descriptor, um, which number the file descriptor has, which file it points to, and at the position of the file descriptor. And so when Creo restores the process, it opens the same file with the same file descriptor ID. It positions the file descriptor at the same location. So in once the process um, keeps on running or continues to run, the file descriptor will be exactly the same than it was uh, before checkpointing. And so if the file is accessed, um, this will just work as it was um, before checkpointing. And in addition to, to restoring all the resources the process uses, all the memory pages are mapped back at the right location. Then we load back all the security settings, App Armor, SE Linux, sec SecComp. We make this as late as possible to make restoring easier so that we are not confined by any of the um, security mechanisms here. And once everything is restored as it was, um, we jump into the restore process and the process keeps on running as it was um, before checkpointing. So now to, um, to container live migration. Um, so container live migration um, exists for, uh, for probably you could say a long time because um, OpenVZ, which, uh, which uh, provides container for, for a very long time, they, they are actually the, the people who, who invented Creo to provide um, migration capabilities for their containers. So um, OpenVZ invented Creo and they use it. So if you are running um, OpenVZ containers, you can live migrate them using Creo. Then Creo is also integrated into Borg. This is Google's container engine. Um, we, we Creo upstream had reports from, from Google during the last two Linux Plumbers conferences, how they use um, live migration in their container engine in production. And it works um, pretty good for them as far as we are told. So it's, uh, it's, it's a thing that is used in production and works uh, reliable for, for them. Then we have integration of uh, Creo in LexC, LexD to migrate containers. We have integration of Creo into Docker to checkpoint restore and migrate containers. And the thing I want to already show here is, um, is how it's integrated into, into Podman. And I think this is the, I've, I've been working on this for the last three or two and a half years. And just some words about Podman. Podman is a container runtime, which, which is daemonless. So there's no daemon running. You just start your container and then there's nothing um, which, um, which you need to talk to. You always talk directly to, to your containers, which is running. And, and one thing is with Podman, you also can run containers as non-root. This is just, 
this is not really relevant for um, for checkpoint restore because Creo is not working as non-root yet. We are on the way there. But um, to get um, checkpoint restore into Podman, I think the first discussion started around the beginning of 2018. I had the first code ready in May 2018 and it was merged in October 2018. So we had um, checkpoint restore capabilities at this point. Um, it, it required changes to Runcy and Creu and of course Portman, but at this point it was only able to checkpoint and restore a container. It was basically only the support for the first use case. I checkpoint my container, I reboot my system and I restore the container. It was not possible to live migrate a container or make copies of it. So my next steps were to get um, container live migration working and by June 2019 all the changes were merged into Portman. And this again required changes in, in all, all of the involved layers. So Podman, Runcy, Creu, SLinux, and, and all these changes were merged. And now you can actually checkpoint and restore and migrate container like you've already seen in my demos. The nice thing is the, the checkpoint I, I am exporting into a file. It includes all file system changes. So you do not have to worry about if your container creates files um, in its local container file system. All these file system changes will be applied uh, upon restore of the container. So um, Podman handles all the changes to the container necessary and you just have to use this simple um, export functionality. So now to my last demo showing um, the, uh, the, the migration of a container from one host to another host. The slides here are just showing the commands um, which are necessary to do this in case the demo doesn't work. But let's see here. Let's go back to the demo. Podman PS. So I still have my containers running. And so let's make a um, check. Uh, let's make a checkpoint of the newest container here. Checkpoint minus L. Keep it running and export it again to, to a file, to a checkpoint archive. Now the container is uh, written to disk. Let's see which result I currently get from my last of apartments last known container. It says 9, 10, 11, 12. So now I mm, transfer the checkpoint to um, another system. So I say just the SAP to another host and now I connect to the other host. And now I restore the container here. I say Podman container restore import um, temp checkpoint archive. And let's give it a name. Let's call it hello. Now let's call it hello5. And if I now access the container, it should return a nine and it does. So now I have migrated my container stateful migration from one system to, to another and the container just keeps on running here and on the other host because I, I didn't stop it there. So that's uh, the demo for the container migration. A few more slides with the commands I'm using for my um, container migration here, which can be viewed offline if necessary. So um, about the future, so um, people often ask about uh, Kubernetes. And so probably future could be um, to migrate a container and I'm, I'm actively working on this. So once I, I got it into Podman, I was starting to look at um, um, CRIO, which is, a, which is a container runtime Kubernetes can use. And I implemented Checkpoint Restore for CRIO. And now, because this requires API changes to the CR interface, to the container runtime interface, I'm currently um, 
waiting for reviews on my um, Kubernetes enhancement proposal to add checkpoint restore to the CRI API. So this is, I have an implementation to checkpoint restore containers um, using CRIO. It's not yet migration, it's just um, local checkpoint restore, but I think this would be the correct step to get container migration up um, into, into Kubernetes. And the other things um, we are working on is non-root checkpoint restore. So currently Creo requires um, um, being root or yeah, Capsys admin, you need the right capability to run checkpoint restore. So um, there have been requests from the Creo community every other month. So how can, is it possible to checkpoint restore a container as non-root? And we usually say, oh, it's almost possible to do that. Um, but we never actually um, tried to implement the necessary changes in the kernel. And so now with Linux kernel 5.9, there will be a new capability called cap checkpoint restore. And the relevant interfaces in the Linux kernel are now um, protected by the capability cap checkpoint restore. So if you give if you give Creo the capability cap checkpoint restore, it should be possible to run um, Creo as non-root to checkpoint the processes of your own user. Um, this is um, the, the Creo patches are not yet merged, but they they exist. The kernel patches are merged, so this could be ready in a, in a few months to be actually actually be usable for for you on your local system. So. Summary, um, Creo can checkpoint and restore containers. It's integrated in different container engines. It's, it's used in production. Um, um, and now the, the use cases I've shown is reboot into a new kernel without losing container state. You can start multiple copies of one running container to not wait for initialization or to keep all your data loaded into memory. And of course, migrate running container because this year is about um, container life migration. So this is the, the main goal of, of this talk. And with this, uh, I'm, I'm at the end of my presentation. And those are here links to things I mentioned here during my presentation. And with this, I'm at the end. Thank you for listening.